Welcome back. Uh, today we have on, well, the newest member, well, not the newest, a new member, I should say, uh, to the assembly. And there's a lot of new members, but uh, we'd like to welcome the one for this district, Kati Petri Norris, who is the 74th Assembly District. And that's your district, along with um, several others in the area, several other cities and towns. So uh, congrats and welcome. Thank you. Happy right. New Year. Happy New Year to, to you. Here. So let's first talk, before we get into some of the issues, let's talk about what's been going on for you in your first couple weeks and how that process has been going and getting up to Sacramento. Well, I got sworn in on December 3rd. Okay. So a little over a month ago, and it has been an incredible month. It's been a busy month, but it's mm -hmm. been an incredible month. And I'm really pleased to say that we're already working on the issues that we talked about during the campaign mm -hmm. and the commitments that we made to our constituents during the campaign. We are working on uh, some environmental policy issues, particularly sea level rise. We are working on some public safety issues okay. and education. And the thing that we've been doing, the thing we've really prioritized over the past month is reaching out to all of the councils and the city managers. We've got six cities in the district. Right. So right. we're connecting with each and every one of them to make sure that we understand what are the issues, what are the priorities, and how can we help to get things done and bring more resources back home to Orange County? Okay, and so I want to, um, before I forget, you, you have a local office in Costa Mesa. Yes, we Am do. Am I right? And the local office is 714-668-2100. And uh, we were talking right beforehand to get to the state website, the Assembly right. uh, 74 District. It's really kind of convoluted. So my best to tell everyone is just, uh, Google, even, uh, you know, Cotty 74th District, California. Do something like that. It'll come up. And then another good way to yeah. stay in touch <laughs> with us, you can stay in touch with us on Facebook. So yeah, yeah. follow me on Facebook. It's Assemblywoman CPN, my initials. Okay. And so you can stay up to date on what we're doing and all the events that we have in the district and you know how we can be helpful to, to our constituents. Yeah, yeah. It's so uh, that's the best way to do it. All right, let's talk about some of the issues. We have Gavin Newsom as uh, governor now, and it seems like, at least to me, we're going into more socialism direction. Um, there's, a, I'm, I'm gonna just, he has proposed a $144 billion um, budget. The budget doesn't come through until June, am I right? Correct, okay. so this is, this is an more initial his... draft of the budget, Correct. and we will continue to negotiate it, and then that will be approved, finalized, and put into action in June. Okay, so um, it was, uh, it's predicted, or he predicted, that there's gonna be a um, $21 billion surplus, you know, it could be 18, mm -hmm. it could be 22, but right around there. And um, uh, there's a, maybe so, sl a little bit of slower growth in the state as far as people going. But let's talk about some of the things, because, you know, some of the things that I looked at, this was an article I just looked at yesterday, and I think it was from the Sacramento Bee. But, you know, a couple of the things that, that stood out to me is a lot of money, um, well, being spent on low-income families, health care for illegals, and some people are going, well, we want health care, but why should we be spending money on people who shouldn't even be here, especially for health care? So I think, so Governor Newsom has called this budget, this 2019-2020 budget, the California for All mm -hmm. budget. And I think the first thing that the budget does, and the, the first thing that he emphasized, I think both during the uh, press conference to announce the budget and also during the inauguration, was that his number one priority is ensuring that we have a strong foundation for California. So this budget shores up the rainy day fund Mm -hmm. It pays down some of our debt obligations, and it's also paying down some of our uh, unmet liabilities and unfunded liabilities. So I think that's the, the first thing it does. He's also made historic, or he's proposing historic investments in education from K-12 all the way through you know, community mm -hmm. college and, and advanced degrees. It also includes some meaningful and I think needed investment for emergency response and emergency recovery, at both in terms of funding our CAL FIRE capabilities right, right. and wildfire prevention. And the other thing that the budget does is a one-time investment in, I think, a needed uh, investment in addressing our housing and homelessness crisis. And I think what's important to note is that the spending proposals that the governor has put forth 
think he and everyone else in the legislature were very aware that while we might have a little bit of a surplus right now, mm -hmm. we're not expecting that to continue. We are planning, obviously we're hoping that we continue to have you know, an unprecedented economic growth, mm -hmm. but we're planning anticipating a downturn. So we're planning from a position okay. of, I think, being careful about how we're budgeting. So the investments that are getting made now, he's being really careful about saying, these are one-time investments because so, we have a but surplus. But we've been heard that in the past from many governors. Mm -hmm. They don't end up being one-time investments. They go on in perpetuity, um, which we've seen with certain taxes and things like that. They go to sunset, but then they get re-upped again. So. Well, that's think, the fear that's, with this. I mean, I think what and you're that's been up, historically California over the last yeah. 20 years, regardless of who the governor has been. I mean, I think what you're getting at is, is kind of a bigger issue, which I think is important. I think it's that people need to be able to trust the government, and they need to be able mm -hmm. to trust that their representatives are going to you know, say what they mean, mean what they say, and do what they're committed to. Mm -hmm. And actually, one thing that's, that's I think, ex very exciting for me, I've been asked to chair the Assembly's Accountability and Administrative Review Committee. Okay. And our remit there is to ensure that government programs are operating efficiently, that legislation that is getting passed is being implemented effectively, and that we are, I think, uh, maintaining the commitments that we make to our constituents. So in that capacity, I'm really looking forward to working with Governor Newsom, with Speaker Rendon, mm -hmm. and with all of my colleagues okay. to ensure that we are positioned for long-term economic growth. But what about the huge tax burden? Because uh, this was quite interesting. In 2018, um, they, they said, what are the number one Google searches mm -hmm. by state? Every state was different. Okay. The number one Google search for people living in California was about leaving the state. Wow. And it had to do, um, each state was different. It was interesting, I went through a couple different states, but you can look this up. And it was really about the cost of living, the tax burden, the burden. You know, our, our gas is quite literally a dollar higher than anywhere else in the nation, except maybe I think New Jersey and New York. Our taxes are some of the highest. Um, you know, how do you res respond to that? I mean, a lot of these programs are good, mm -hmm. but on one hand, what happened to the people, to, you know, saying, well, you take care of yourselves. You know, we paid for my daughter, who's, my daughter's 12 years old, my wife's a teacher, we're very aware of the education, mm -hmm. but we paid for her health care, we paid for her, um, you know, preschool and things like that. Why should I, or the people living here who have great grandchildren, pony out money for people who can't afford to pay for their own kids. That's whatever happened from standing up for yourself. So I also, I believe very firmly in standing up for yourself and in working really hard to get ahead. And mm -hmm. I think that in some cases now, I think it's harder, it's, it's getting more and more difficult for you know, people that aren't in the same position as we are mm -hmm. to create opportunities for their kids. And I think that it's beholden upon us as a state to help level the, the playing field, to make sure that we make good on our commitment that if you do work hard and you play by the rules that you can get ahead. And I think that ultimately to me, that's not just something that I think is the morally right thing to do. I really do believe that that is the right thing to do to ensure the long-term economic growth and prosperity of California. Because the bottom line is, if more people succeed, if more people become active and vibrant parts of the economy, our co economy is gonna continue to grow. And so that's the way that I think about it, but I absolutely think about things from an investment perspective. So my business, mm -hmm. uh, my background is in business. Okay. So I think about, you know, is the dollar, I, I don't like things where you go, gosh, I'm gonna spend a dollar today and that's the end of that. Right. I like things where we can say, if we spend a dollar today, that is going to return five to $10 in terms of the economic benefit to the state and to the country mm -hmm. over the course of the next 10 years. Like those kinds of things and those kinds of programs, that's what I'd like to see us focused on. Okay, well, maybe that means we'll get a rebate for all the money we spend on our own health care, or I mean our own uh, child for her preschool. You know, that's what I'm, I'm talking about, or whatever it may be, our own, the money spent on my older mm -hmm. daughter's education in college and things like that. I think that's what it is is um, you know these more and more programs, uh, the middle class who's they've kind of done the right thing. They've 
you know, I'm not talking about people helping people out who have done the right thing and they've lost their mm -hmm. job. That's different. Right. I'm talking about people from the get-go who are maybe having kids they can't afford and now looking for the state, well, feed us, clothe us, educate us, you know, without doing things on their own. And they get, uh, you know, they, it, it's a system that doesn't uh, end for them. It doesn't sunset where from the very start, if we just said, hey, you got to do for you here, mm -hmm. it seems like people, you know, it's that old, that old saying, you know, uh, give somebody a fish they right. eat for the night, but mm -hmm. say, no, here's a fishing Teach pole, go do it for yourself. For a lifetime. Yeah. yeah, and that seems to be not what we're doing in this state. We're, we're, hel we're I guess to me, I, I call it a helicopter state, you okay. know, like helicopter parent. It's like, you know, we don't want you to fall down. We don't want you to throw through the cracks. Well, failure sometimes is a very good thing for people. Well, I think, I, I definitely agree that if you feed, you know, if you give somebody a fish they eat today, and if you teach somebody to fish, then they fish for a life or eat for a lifetime. And I absolutely agree that those are the types of programs that we should be investing in. And I also think that we need to make sure that incentives are, al are aligned and if incentives are appropriate to encourage people to work hard, to encourage people to, to go to school, to encourage people to get good jobs. And I think there are things that we can do as a state, particularly at this moment, where we're in a world where technology is changing so much of what we do and mm -hmm. how we do it. Here in Orange County, there are so many technology jobs that employers can't even fill them. That's right. So there You're are right. incredible opportunities for us to create, I think, training programs that will allow people to move mm -hmm. into highly skilled, well-paying jobs right. and become yeah. you know, part of the community and part of the economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bring up a very good point in that um, throughout the country, uh, you, you hear, I, I, I've been watching a show for decades called This Old House, which I'm sure you've heard yeah. of. And they've talked about that the tens of thousands of trade jobs that are not mm -hmm. being filled because yep. people don't look at that as kids, I should say, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they don't look at that as great positions anymore. And yet you become an electrician, you become, yes, there's downturns, you know, when the, when the economy goes ebbs and flows, but it, it's an amazing the, the amount of money that they, they, they can write their own tickets practically. Absolutely. Or there's, in technology, we don't have yep. enough software engineers, so the trades, whatever trades mean nowadays, are, 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 there's a plethora of jobs out there. Absolutely, those are good, well-paying jobs, and I think there are more things that we can do to open up opportunities in mm -hmm. career technical education as well yeah, as yeah. in technology Maybe jobs. Maybe bring back um, auto shop back to right. high school. And, and you or say that, we've, we, you know, I've had that conversation yeah. with many teachers and with many educators and even with many legislators that we've kind of you know, closed mm -hmm. down a path that perhaps we need to, to take a closer look at. Right, now when it comes to community colleges, they do an excellent, excellent job and they are also seeing the need for trades yep. and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you think we could see maybe like a partnership, maybe where um, you know, local companies maybe help fund this trade program, mm -hmm. kind of like an apprentice program, and then you know, the student comes and apprentices for them for a year, whatever it might be. I think those types of programs are terrific ideas, and we've mm -hmm. even got a couple of examples of those happening in Orange County with some of the, the building trades partnering with some of the community colleges right, here. Right. And I think there's a real opportunity, like I said, my background is in business, so mm -hmm. I've uh, been involved in a number of startups, and there you you know think about things from a venture capital model. Right? Right, People, right, you, you, right. You know, invest in a bunch of different things mm -hmm. and see what is working. What I'd like to see us do is look at all the different programs that are, are operating around the state and find those ones that are working really effectively and then find ways to scale that and make that right. available to more people. You are um, in, the, in your local office, how, how often compared to being up in Sacramento? So I'm just curious about that. It ends up being about a 50-50 split. Okay. So when we're in session, then I'll be in Sacramento from uh, Monday mornings for the most part until Thursday afternoons and then okay. back in the district for Friday and the weekend. And then when we're, when we're not in session, I'm, I'm in the district uh, okay. the entire time. So again, that local number is the best one. Yes, yeah, if people yeah. are, you know, okay. our district office. Because from there they can get a hold of you. And, the, you yeah. know, our objective and our mission really is to make government work for the people and work for the people that elected us and the people that we represent. So if constituents are having issues with you know, government service or right. you know, with you know, navigating the bureaucracy, 
we are there to help and people should pick up the phone and uh, and call the district office. Okay, what are the di what are the cities that you represent? The, the areas? Uh, I know it's a kind of convoluted, isn't yeah, it? Well, the, the it's, shape uh, of the district? it's it's sort of coastal Orange County. Yeah, yeah. So it's South Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, Laguna okay. Woods, uh, most of Irvine and Costa Mesa. Okay, all right, very good. So the most beautiful district in the state of California. It, it, yeah, I, <laughs> I would certainly agree with that, yes. yes. Uh, you have your Facebook page. If people forget what it is, they can go to Facebook, just put in your name, yes. it'll come up. Yeah, yes. And then so, from there, they can get a hold of things. You can. Absolutely. Yeah, so any of, of our, okay. our, our contact information, resources, and upcoming events will all, be, will all be on the Facebook page, which is Assemblywoman CPN. Okay, very good. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure we'll see you uh, again um, on and off over the over the uh, coming months. Yes, and we will be we will be having uh, mobile office hours in Laguna Woods oh, okay. beginning in February. Uh, we're going to have those on a monthly basis, where my my staff will be here. Oh, great! To, uh, you know, connect with any constituents okay. that have issues. So we'll be sharing the details. Yeah, of that please do. When uh, w once we finalize that, and then. Once a month, kind of throughout the district, we're going to do a community coffee with Cotty, and we'll be rotating through the cities and the district just as an opportunity for people to hear from me about what's going on and for me to hear from people about, about the things that are happening in their lives. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you so much. You take care. Appreciate it. Good to and see you. We'll be right back.